are Locked On Cowboys, your daily Dallas Cowboys podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back to the Locked On Cowboys podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Thank you for tuning in. I am your host, Marcus Mosier. You can follow me on Twitter at Marcus underscore Mosier. And joining me today, as always, is my co-host, Landon McCool. You can follow him on Twitter at McCoolBCB. You can also listen to him on the Best Coast Boys podcast. Landon, what's going on, sir? Not much. We got a hard knocks tonight. Uh, I, I am currently not in the COVID protocol, just in case anyone was wondering about that. Uh, I managed to avoid all that. Sure. Uh, sure. So uh, so no announcements there, uh, but but I'm excited to talk football. We got questions. We haven't done questions in a little while, so I'm, I'm excited to kind of get into that for sure. Yeah, and we're going to get to some really, really good questions that you guys have. But before we do that, we should update everybody on what we've heard about the Cowboys COVID situation going on right now. Dan Quinn, Carlos Watkins, Israel Mukamara. Uh, C.D. Lamb, and who was the other one? Malik Hooker. Malik Hooker are all currently in the COVID protocols. It sounds like some of these players are in different stages, right? It sounds like a few tested positive. Um, I believe Malik Hooker was in the waiting period uh, for his second vaccine to be fully vaccinated. I think that's what I heard, like, right? Because after you get the second shot, you have to wait two weeks until – I think. I'm, I. It's just all so confusing. I hate – I hate having to talk about this rather than football, if, but I believe that's what's if going I remember. On. If I remember correctly, CD Lamb is fully vaccinated. Yes, Bukamu has one shot and is waiting on his second shot. I think, or no, no, bukamu has got both shots and is still waiting for the two week post. That's what it is. Yes, shot to to finish. And I think you're right that Carlos Watkins uh, is between shots, if I'm not mistaken. I so, believe Willie Cooker is between shots as well. I yes, think there was at least yeah. Hooker was one of the other players. I think that was between shots. So. The good I mean, news, look, the good news is to like, keep track of this. This yeah, yeah. is ridiculous. CD Lamb wasn't going to play on Sunday anyways. Carlos Watkins, depending on how things go with him, he might be able to play. Dan Quinn might be able to coach. I'm guessing Makamu and Hooker probably won't play, but we're still early enough in the week that we don't have to say for sure that they're not playing. But I don't think anything here is going to prevent them or any of these guys for being ready in week one is what I'm trying to say, right? No, I mean, the only unfortunate thing about this really is that, you know, it would have been nice to see Mukamu and Hooker play in this game just because those two guys specifically, uh, you're trying to sort out that safety room. And and, and I think that uh, both of those guys, you know, Hooker especially who hasn't, you know, been injured, needs snaps before the regular season. Uh, You really hope that maybe he can get back so he can get some snaps uh, against the the Jaguars. Uh, Forgot for a second. Uh, It doesn't matter. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, it doesn't really matter. But but it, it matters for guys like that who need to get yeah. some snaps, not so much the, for the score, but for you know guys that just kind of need to get their legs underneath them. Uh, it would be good if he could get back in time to play that game. But but if he can't, uh, you know, I'm assuming that this isn't going to actually hold him out from playing in in the week one game against the Bucks. All right, we're going to transition to a question that I think has something to do with Makamu, uh, Landon. This question from Clayton of the of the players the Cowboys might not keep on their initial 53 man roster. Who is the one you're most worried about being poached? I'll give you mine. It's Israel Mokamu. We've talked about safeties, right? If they only keep five safeties, Mokamu might be in trouble, right? Because you're going to keep, obviously, Donovan Wilson and KZ. I think you're going to keep Hooker and you're going to keep uh, Javon, or J. Ron Kurz. Do you keep a fifth safety? Who knows? But maybe maybe that's the one guy that doesn't make the 53-man roster that the Cowboys want to put on the special teams – or excuse me, on the practice squad that doesn't make it back. That is the guy I'm nervous about. What about you? You know, I'm actually uh, – I actually don't know that he's going to get poached because I feel like he's going to make the team. The, okay. the guys that I'm concerned about would be – you know, because ultimately what they'll do is if they decide to keep a guy like Makamu, it'll be Curse who will get cut, right? Or okay. someone like that who – is a is a uh, established vet that they can make a deal with to come sign back, you know, the next day. So those th- that's the guy I actually worry about because I don't think it would be safe to put McCom on the street, um, you know, because he has shown you a little bit. He has uh, shown out a little bit in, in the preseason, and the, the the real thing is that rookie contract. You just don't want to expose that rookie no, contract no, no, to the no. street. So that's what will get poached. Uh, so I would say that if 
they're, they're close enough that like someone like Mikamu is going to make it, then cut curse, cut one of these guys that is a vested veteran that you can just say, Hey, we'll turn around and sign you, uh, you know, just after week one. Uh, those are the guys I worry about though. I mean, the, the, those kind of vet guys who uh, I'm not so much worried about, you know, being poached, like, like, uh, like, you know, a practice squad guy from uh, to a regular, uh, regular lineup, but, but maybe someone who, um, you know, you want to kind of have on this team, but is not necessarily interested in your, uh, your roster gymnastics that happen uh, on cutdown day. Th- those are the guys that I think you know could potentially walk for for greener pastures if if they present themselves. Sean McEwen. Yeah, I mean, I, I I'm keeping McEwen. Okay. You know, uh, and and sprinkles my guy that I would do that with. Okay. Right. Semi, oh, well, semi for Hoku. Yeah. I'm actually not that worried about losing for Hoku. <laughs> you know, I, I look, I had this argument with somebody on Twitter, not an argument, just a conversation with somebody on Twitter about this. If it was on day, Twitter, it was like, an argument, but okay, go ahead. Yeah, sure. <laughs> it's, it's all an argument on Twitter. It's like, what has he done? You know, what is he needed to have a really big game against Houston, and he had three penalties, you know, two of which were on special teams, if I if I remember correctly. So that's that's kind of the opposite direction. And I understand he's your draft pick, but you also had 11 draft picks, so I don't, you know, I don't know, man. I, I think I haven't quite seen enough. I understand that he's a Will uh, McClay darling, and maybe that's what keeps him on this roster somehow, but I, I don't know that he's someone that I need to feel protecting. I, I will say this. For both the Cowboys and Fahoku, the best possible situation for both parties would for him to be on this practice squad and stay yep. there for the entire year, right? Learn the position, learn how to play special teams, don't bounce around trying to get on an active roster for a couple of weeks just because you want to be on an active roster, not a practice squad, because that's not going to help your development, right? If you're stuck on four different teams and you keep getting cut because you don't play on the practice or you don't play on special teams, you're going to get kind of washed away. So I'd rather see him take the whole year, learn one wide receiver position in one special teams position, come back next year, win. We the Cowboys could have some big openings at receiver, right? Like if Cedric Wilson, Noah Brown, and Michael Gallup all leave because they're all free agents, maybe you can come in and grab the wide receiver four job. You're not going to get it this year. Maybe come in next year and grab it. So uh, the best go ahead. the best way to get a new job is to have good tape out there. You haven't put out good tape yet. So the best way to get that good tape is to stay in a system for an entire year. Work out with the team, be mm-hmm. in the practice squad, learn that system so that we, I mean, you know, when you're on the practice squad, you're not learning the system, but you still have your own free time. You're around the group, you're around oh, the coaches, so you can yeah. talk, you can learn. But and, you're in meetings time, too, right? You're you're in the yeah, meetings, absolutely. you're learning what the coaches want, you're watching CD Lamb and Michael Gallup and Amari Cooper do something. It's so much more beneficial for him long term to stay with his team than go somewhere else. And then when he gets on the other side of it ne- in training camp next year, that's when he can really you take that opportunity to put good tape out there. And if he doesn't want to do this dance again next year, if he doesn't quite make the team, that is when he probably should jump ship and and try to find greener pastures once he has a year under his belt. I agree. Uh, All right, let's take a quick break so I can tell you guys about Bet Online. It's that time of year again, and all eyes are now turning to football as teams are back on the gridiron to start the football season. As always, Bet Online is your number one spot for all the pro and college football action this season. By the way, we've got college football this week. That's that's a I lot know. Of fun. It's exciting. Uh, uh, not your Auburn Tigers, but some actual fun games. Nebraska, Illinois. Hey, Anyways, hey, uh, hey. head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today and receive your uh, 100% welcome bonus. They changed that on us. 100% welcome bonus. Bet online is the fastest and the easiest way to bet on all your sports action from football, basketball, boxing, right to your favorite Vegas casino games. Don't wait and take advantage of all the great offers available for the 2021 season. Bet online, your online sportsbook experts. Just make sure you're using that promo code locked on. All right, let's get to some more questions. This one from our guy, Mark. He wants to know who has been the most pleasant surprise of camp and the preseason for you. Oh, pleasant surprise. Um, Hmm. I mean, I'll, mine has been Osa, right? I mean, it's, I've been pretty, yeah. been kind of glowing about Osa right lately because they have just no interior defensive line depth. So to have him play well in the preseason has been, you know, something they really, really needed. So I, that that one's for me. 
Yeah, I mean, I think you know, in general, I think that the coverage has been better than I ex- than okay. I expected. Um, so I, I think guys like Anthony Brown in general has played better than I expected, and um, you know, so I, I would say some of these corners have, have played just a little bit better than uh, anticipated for for me. Maybe Justin Hamilton. You know, yeah. he's a guy that uh, I guess a lot of people have been saying online, like, "Oh, did Justin Hamilton make this team?" I I kind of had already assumed he had, yeah. you know, just because yeah. I thought, you know, you see him ro- rotating in there a lot with the ones and you just, you haven't seen a ton of him over the last few years, even though he's been on the team, he's been kind of up and down. I felt like he's really kind of stabilized his game over the last off season. So that's, that's, that's a good nice surprise. Uh, all right. This next one is specifically for you, Landon. Uh-huh. Uh, what, <laughs> what pick would you add on to Jalen Smith to trade him away during this season? So a lot of people want to move on from Jalen Smith. Uh, cutting him does not really give you any added uh, ad- added cap space or anything like that. Actually, it, ca- it costs you cap space. But if you trade him, you can actually save about nineteen mil- or excuse me, nine million against the cap next year. Would you give up like a fifth round pick to trade away Jalen or no? No, that doesn't. Would make you sense give up now. any pick? Would I give up a pick to trade him away? Yes. No. This is this, this is not. As debilit, this is one season, you know. Like I, I don't know. I'm not doing a like a an NBA type salary okay. dump for one year, and and then you still have to probably go find another linebacker. I think. I mean, maybe a lower roster guy. Maybe not as you know. Maybe not a, a, an immediate backup guy. But I, I, I don't know that that's worth it to be honest. Just I, I, I think this is a a, a a a symptom of just people wanting to get rid of Jalen Smith. You know, I I understand that that the the salary is debilitating, but trading, giving away a draft pick to trade away the the salary that doesn't make sense to me. So, all right, what if the difference is you can trade away Jalen's roster spot, and that opens up you know a spot for somebody else? Maybe it's an extra safety uh, who can play on special teams. Maybe it's an extra corner. Maybe you can keep. Kennedy and Nashawn Wright and Calvin Joseph and all these other guys. Is that appealing to you? I mean, I I have a roster that does that already. I, I okay. don't. So, so okay. I, that's my thing is that I I don't think that I'm in such a roster bind right now that I need to give away a draft pick to save nine million dollars next year. When I mean, what what what's the difference between what what you're going to get if you cut him before June first next year? It's, it's a probably, little. I think it's a little bit, but it's not a, It's not significant. That's not worth it to me. I'd rather have the draft pick and just you know. Jalen Jalen Smith's not like a malcontent. He's not like a problem in the locker room. Not yet, room. At don't, least, right? Not that we've heard of. I can't imagine him being. I, I understand. People no, no, I, like him, I, I'm not. I'm not saying that he, he has been that behind closed doors, but it's possible. Whenever you have a guy that's this highly paid and he's not playing, that's where it could become a problem. Again, is, we have not heard anything like that at all. But it, maybe it is an issue down the road. I don't think Jalen Smith's that type of person. Okay. So I I, I, I I could be wrong, but I just don't think this is worth the squeeze. Okay. Uh, next one. And this one's actually a little bit topical. Uh, this one's from Sebastian. Is there any potential free agents the Cowboys could sign in the upcoming weeks? Well, we did hear them uh, about them working out a defensive tackle that we know, PJ Hall on Monday. Um, it's not Geno Atkins, so everybody can just relax. PJ Hall is very interesting yeah. because – I think he actually makes a little bit of sense. He's six foot one, like 315 pounds. Well, he was 315 pounds. When he got cut with the Raiders, he was like 350, but that's a different story. Um, as somebody that's highly, highly athletic, I wonder if that's a guy that maybe they're keeping an eye on just in case they need an extra defensive lineman. Yeah. You know, I mean, the, there's obviously going to be. I, I felt like they needed one body there just to kind of get them through until at least Hill or Gallimore gets back. Mm-hmm. Uh, Hall, Hall could definitely be that. Another guy that they looked at too was uh, Dalen Mack, who is a, a former uh, Texas A&M nose Well, tackle. also a pre-draft love of yours. Make sure you go ahead and uh, I'm just going to throw that in there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> he's more of a one, one technique nose guy, but – um yeah i can I mean, see how he could fit though i can i can yeah. completely see how he would fit on this defense if you want somebody to give bohana a break it makes a ton of sense yeah i i wouldn't be surprised if he was a practice squad uh guy yep. you know if they decide they liked him and then signed him and maybe he plays in this game if if they if for some reason they don't think watkins can make it 
they just they they sign him to play in this game or him or PJ Hall or both maybe, uh, and then they just you know you kind of wash them into whatever roster maneuvers they plan on doing near uh, the first week cuts. Yeah, I, I think I think one of those guys will be eventually signed to the practice squad just because they have. We you keep saying this, Lane. They have zero defensive line depth, and now with Carlos Watkins on the injured reserve, excuse me, on the COVID list, uh, Tristan Hill still on the PUP, Neville Gallimore being injured, like they need bodies. I mean, just and, for this game, just for this. They, just they, to they get might even yeah, game, they might honestly. even just need bodies for this game because I don't think. I don't want to see Osa Adigizuwa playing 51 snaps in this game at all, like we saw in the first two preseason games, right? We we don't want to see Hamilton out there playing that many snaps either. Honestly, like, yeah, you you need to protect your guy. So you could just be signing P.J. Hall to come in here and play 65 snaps, you know, versus Jacksonville, and then he might die cutting him and going to the practice (laughs) squad. So yeah, Uh, yeah, you can't you can't risk losing Osa. I mean, the way he's playing um, and the depth of the position, you just can't lose him. And I don't think you want to play any of the veterans like Brent Urban, right? Like there's no there's no reason to have him on the field at all because he's probably going to be one of your week one starters. So it would not surprise me if the Cowboys are looking for defensive tackles who are also vaccinated that they can bring in. They don't have to wait the five days for, right? Yep. Uh, so just kind of keep an eye on that situation. Mm-hmm. Uh, one more quick break to tell you guys about rockauto.com. It's a family business serving auto parts to customers online. For over 20 years, they have everything from engine control modules and brake parts, motor oil, and even new carpet. Whether it's for your classic or your daily driver, get everything you need in a few easy clicks delivered directly to your door. The rockauto.com catalog is unique and remarkably easy to navigate. Quickly see all the parts available for your vehicle and choose the brand specifications and prices that you prefer. Go to rockauto.com right now and see all the parts available for your car or truck. Right, locked on on the how did you hear about us box? So they know that we sent you amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need. Visit rockauto.com today. All right, our next question from Jeff, and man, man, he knows how to suck up to you. Uh, he said, How great is it going to be when we see that Nick Ralston makes the roster and he makes fullbacks relevant again? My gosh, he's pandering to you like I've never Which seen is- before. No, honestly, he may not be. He, he may actually be uh, uh, slapping me in the face because I did release what my 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 you know fifty three man roster guess is, and I I didn't have Ralston on it to be straightforward. Really, so he, I'm shocked. So, which is a lot of people. Well, a lot of people were shocked, honestly, and, and they've been kind of angry at me for kind of going the opposite way. Um, I'm sorry. Was the question what what is it going to take for him to get, to make the roster? No, no. The question is, is he going to make fullbacks relevant again? That's literally the question. <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know if he's going to make fullbacks relevant again. Um, but, but he, you know, look, he has the potential to do some stuff. He's, he's an athletic guy. He's what you're looking for at, at, as a fullback. Uh, it's just, it's, it's man, it's a big leap to go from, uh, from what is it, Lafayette, Louisiana, to, yeah. uh, to, to the NFL. So, uh, I, I think. He's gonna get a shot. I mean, it certainly hasn't he has, hasn't shown to be too big for him yet. Um, but I mean, we still have not seen him play regularly with the ones or against uh, NFL talent very much. Yeah. So it'll be interesting to see. Yeah, I think he's somebody who does need to have a big preseason game against Jacksonville to yeah. potentially solidify his roster spot. So uh, this is gonna be our last question, Lena. So feel free to take as much time as you need to answer this question. But oh, uh, someone wants to know. What makes Dan Quinn and his scheme coaching better than Rod Marinelli? Because we've praised Rod Marinelli a lot on the show about how good of a teacher he is, uh, how well he knows the Tampa two. But what makes Dan Quinn a better defensive coordinator than Rod Marinelli? Well, I, I just think that there's, you know, a more modern approach uh, to 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 his defense than Marinelli. You know, Marinelli is a guy that wants to teach technique over and over and over again until you're so good at it that that's what the driving force of, of your defense is, is that you're playing fast, you ha- you have talent, you're running to the football, you're hustling, good and good things will happen. If you'll make plays, you'll fall on the ball, that sort of thing. I think the difference here is obviously, you know, they kind of come from similar roots as a defense, right, as far as the kind of classic Tampa 2 that's evolved into a co- more of a cover one, cover three defense. Uh, but I think the dif- the main difference really is it, Quinn continues to talk about matchup football, which is more than, you know, what we saw heard from Marinelli. Marinelli, again, he wants to line up and play, our guys versus your guys. 
uh, Quinn definitely seems more interested in uh, finding the mismatches, exploiting them, uh, making sure that there mis- there aren't mismatches on their sides and how to make sure that they aren't exploited by those. Uh, he keeps talking up the idea of a, a per game, uh, you know, game plan, a per week game plan. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you've seen the personnel groups that are getting deployed out uh, that are just different. You know, there's not stuff that you see. You're seeing three, you know, three, four looks and four, three looks, whatever you want to call those kind of fronts, under fronts, over fronts, bare fronts, tight fronts, you know, two man down fronts, you know, mug, mug looks, which where the mm-hmm. linebackers are up in the A gaps. Um, it's just a lot of variety. And, and I think that it, it's, it's just kind of refreshing to see that they're taking a modern approach to knowing that you not one size fits all on defense, especially when you're playing so many different kinds of offense. It really makes me think about, you remember that game where we played new England and Marinelli, <laughs> like debuted this completely new defense that none yeah, of us had ever seen before. 2015. Right? Yep. There's a, I mean, there's no reason that he couldn't have done that each week. You yep. know, there's no reason that he couldn't have come up with game team specific game plans each week. And I think ultimately that's why Dan Quinn is trying to build a more versatile group than what we saw with with uh, with Marinelli is because his plan is to not just hit you with four men coming at you and eight and seven men dropping into coverage every single play. It's hey, I'm sending six this play. I'm sending four. I'm. I'm. Uh, I got a defensive tackle who's two gapping, so that the other two guys can make the fits right. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, all that kind of stuff. We're even seeing uh, uh, two man high looks in in preseason. I don't know if that's like just because we're in the preseason, but yep. it yep. seems like more two man high looks than we've seen. Uh, you know, previously with this these kind of defenses. So uh, there's a lot of differences, and and I think you know a, a lot of it starts with the approach to how they want their defense to uh, attack opposing offenses. They, they don't just want to be really good at their jobs and hope that they can beat you that way. They want to figure out a way to specifically beat your offense and then use the personnel that they have on this team to kind of do that. So I'm going to say this about Marinelli, and I, I'd like to hear your thoughts. So I think Marinelli ha- actually has a pretty high floor as a defensive coordinator, right? Like if you decide, hey, we're spending a lot of our money on money and assets and resources on offense – Rod, can you just get us to be a top 20 defense? I think he actually can do that for the most part. Like he is he is really good at taking some underachiever guys and turning them into useful players. The problem is, is you can spend a lot of money on that side of the ball. And I think the ceiling is only ever going to be so high, right? Because the defense isn't exotic. It's we, I mean, we saw, you know, some of those years they had top 10 defenses, and then they get to the playoffs and they play a good quarterback like Aaron Rodgers, and then they just get shredded, right? Because Rodgers knows exactly what every single defensive look is going to look like, right? Yeah. Every single yeah. time. Now, it's, Dan, it's, go, ahead. go ahead. Go ahead. No, you go ahead. Finish up, please. I say, Dan Quinn, I feel like the floor might be lower, right? It, it, it might take a long time for this team to really grasp this defense. But if it hits and all these pieces start to work together, we've seen what this Seattle defense you know, can do to really good quarterbacks. We saw what it did when he was in Atlanta – to some really good teams like the Packers and Aaron Rodgers in the championship game. Like the, the ceiling is just so much higher than what I think Rod Marinelli's defense ever could be. It, it's a, it's a trade off for sure, but I think it, it might be a worthwhile one for Dallas. I think you nailed it. I mean, I, I think that it, you know, Marinelli has a system that, you know, it's, you get the right guys in, you train them up as hard as you can. And, and, and that is a very effective way. You're forcing teams. It's, it's complementary defense to be sure. You know, it's forcing teams to dink and dunk against you uh, and, and not make a mistake. The problem is that the line of demarcation between good and great quarterbacks is the ability to both good quarterbacks can take, you know, take chunks out of a defense when they're given, right? Mm-hmm. Um, good quarterbacks can't always consistently build 12 to 15 play drives that where they have to be perfect to get yep. down the field. But the great quarterbacks can do that. The great quarterbacks can do that in their sleep. Tom, yep. Tom, Tom Brady, uh, Rogers. I mean, yep. Dak is, I mean, I think that was kind of the thing that Dak had to show his last level of development. These guys have the ability to take the chunks, but then if you are going to force them to, to, to take slow drive down the field to dink and dunk, they can do that too. And if, and if you have no answer for that as a defense, 
you're screwed. So I think that's the difference. And Quinn even talked about it, right? Is that when you get into the playoffs, when you start facing these guys, they've seen what you're doing. They know what, you know, they, <laughs> they know how to, they know how to find the Turkey hole and cover two. They know how to, you know, they know how to exploit. They have cover three and cover one man beat man beaters that, that, that they can exploit your defense when they know what the coverage is. If you don't have a way to mix it up and disguise that and make the quarterback, not so certain about what they're seeing. If you, you know, Rogers and Brady are going to destroy you. And, and, and that's what, that's what the difference is. Once you get into the playoffs is that you have to have something, not, not that the quarterbacks haven't seen before because they've seen it all. It's something they have to they, solve, right? Like something yeah, they something actually that have to they think still about have to solve. Yeah. Yes. They have to think about while they're in the drops. They can't know pre-snap exactly where they're going with the football every single time, or you're going to be totally screwed. So yep. that's the real difference to me is that, Quinn brings that element of understanding, hey, it's not enough to just be really good at fly around to the football uh, at cover one and cover three schemes. You have to be able to disguise the stuff. You have to be able to mix up the looks, different fronts. Just give the quarterback something else to think about uh, when he's in his drops besides just where the ball is going. Because you get into these big games and it's one or two little thoughts in Aaron Rodgers. We're going to keep using this example. Aaron Rodgers had like, okay, is Keanu Neal blitzing or is he coming on this play? I'm not quite sure. I think he's coming, and all of a sudden he, he drops back into coverage and pick sixes you, and that's the difference in a game. And again, we literally have seen this happen in the one of the biggest stages during the, what, the 2017 or 2016 NFC Championship game. We saw that's that's why Dan Quinn got that job in Atlanta is for games like that. So I, I do think long-term, I think this is going to be a great hire for the Cowboys. Don't expect things if in week one if Brady shreds them. Don't say this is a horrible hire. I'm just I'm just telling you right now. It's going to take some time for the Cowboys to learn the scheme, but I do think ultimately it's going to pay off. Uh, that is it for today's show. Thank you guys for tuning in. As always, you can download and subscribe to the podcast wherever you get your podcast: Apple Podcasts, Spotify. Uh, you can continue to check us out on YouTube uh, at Locked On Cowboys on Twitter. You can follow Landon at McCoolBCB. I'm at Marcus underscore Mosier, and we'll see you next time.